Okay, uh, first question here from Carl. Yes, the key uh, is systems of conservation practices. Any thoughts about the effectiveness of systems of conservation practices? Well, I think we've had a lot of comments around that, but any things you would like to conclude here uh, for the group? Deanna, you talked a lot about systems. Of can, can, can you say that again? I, I didn't quite get it. Carl was agreeing with the key is the oh. systems of conservation okay. practices. Any thoughts about effectiveness of these systems of conservation practices? So there have been a couple watershed scale projects where they have looked at um, the effectiveness of conservation practices at a watershed scale. Uh, the key is not only um, having systems of conservation practices, but making sure they're the right systems and also making sure they get put in the right areas of the watershed. So it's, it's, it's a very um, holistic approach that's going to solve this problem. And, and I took away as part of that is that we'll need to look at practices that both address the erosion P as well as the dissolved P. Does that seem to make sense? I, I, I think we all agree with that. I, I think either yeah. Kevin or Mike could speak more. No, I agree with that. Okay. Kevin or Mike, anything you want to add to the, the systems? No, I think, I mean, I th it's going to take a systems approach. As I said, it's not, uh, we're not going to be able to focus on one aspect. Okay. All right, I'm going to move Rick, down. The only thing I'd add to that is, is, is I agree wholeheartedly with that. And I also agree that we sometimes lock in on practices and we think that they should, they should be as effective no matter where we apply them. And there's going to be a lot of site specific, specific they're going to be very site specific <laughs> uh, and how they perform and how you apply them. Okay. I'm going to move on to a, a question uh, from Landon. Uh, there have been, have there been studies that quantify statistical significant increases in dissolved P from reduced tillage? I have heard that no-till systems have a higher dissolved P loss. There's a, the, with respect to, is there specifically to tile drainage, there's a, a lot of work that's been done uh, on that uh, in New York, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio. Uh, we have our edge of field data that I highlighted. Uh, we show that same thing. That data is not published yet, but, but absolutely, there's a lot of data out there that shows that with tile drainage. And so when we, what would be a sample of a stack practice on no-till that would help best manage that dissolved P? Well, there's, if you think about no-till, um, some of the things, definitely cover crops uh, can, you're going to get more evapotranspiration with cover crops, so therefore you would have less discharge. Uh, so that's going to help. You might pair that with something like the drainage water management or the controlled drainage. Uh, so then you could be you could be backing up or holding that water in the field uh, uh, with that as well. Uh, so that I guess that's one example. I think the other thing is we can't overestimate the importance of nutrient management. Nutrient management is part of a system of conservation practices, and just uh, making sure that our soil test phosphorus levels are not increasing would be very helpful. And um, also managing the placement and timing of our fertilizers too are very important to helping reduce soluble phosphorus losses. Okay. I'm gonna jump down the list of ways. Uh, Michael asks the question, does the organic content of soil influence P mobility? Rick, I can't answer that question because our soils in Arkansas, we have no organic matter. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure. And, 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 and I want to have a conversation here with Kevin while I'm answering this. So we see phosphorus leaching in our coastal plain soils that are sandy textured that have had 
a lot of swine effluent applied. So there's more water going through the soil. Um, and the form of phosphorus tends to be more soluble. And the soil test phosphorus levels are really high. That's where we see a lot of phosphorus moving. I think, Kevin, your soils have higher soil uh, organic matter than ours here in North Carolina, I think. Absolutely, and, yes. Um, you guys are still seeing phosphorus moving there, right? So. Ab absolutely. Now, we've got we've got higher organic matter, but we there's still poor poor soil structure. So we're not sure whether that's coming through the desiccation cracks or whether or whether that leaching uh, into the tiles is is still making that tortuous pathway or not. That's something we're trying. That's something we're trying to parse out. We've got some. We've got some studies going on uh, in, in the labs to try to figure that, but we don't know that yet. And, and uh, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I've seen a little bit of data out of Iowa and their tile drains and they're seeing some phosphorus leaching too. Is that, that right? Or that, am I making this up? That, well, they are, it's, it's very low levels, but they are. And they have really high soil organic data. Yes. Uh, Michael asked in regards to soluble P loss, is there a critical soil phosphorus test level that has been identified for the soluble P loss? I'll tell you, I, I, I can tell you in our state, there was a lot of talk about trying to find a critical level, but you know, phosphorus loading or loss is more than a function than just the source. There's also that transport function it's some function of the interaction between transport and source. So I don't know that we can ever identify uh, a, a, a critical that might be different from, from what our soil test recommendations are for plant needs. But uh, we, we've, we've tried to do that, but we realize that we've got to, to incorporate in that transport factor when we consider that. And I think most of the data show that if you are truly within your agronomic range of phosphorus, um, it, it's not completely protective, but it's um, much more protective than if you start getting into some of the really high soil test phosphorus that we can see here in North Carolina. I agree. Okay, well, thank you to that. Uh, Teresa, uh, do you have a recommendation as to how best to reduce legacy phosphorus in the soil? Stop putting it on. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Okay, well, there was a lot of other uh, ish, interesting questions that we could have got to, just time allows us. Uh, I would have liked to have got more into this connection between our practices and changing weather, but I think that's a a big discussion that's for another time, but that to me is a very interesting challenge ahead of us uh, for those that uh, are, are younger than me that are gonna have to figure that out, I guess. But thank you very much, Mike, Deanna, Kevin, really enjoyed the conversation today, excellent information. And thank you all to have joined this uh, uh, webinar. 